Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at SOAP Web Services. So what is a SOAP Web Service? SOAP is just simply a messaging protocol for exchanging structured information. In this case, it uses messaging protocol to exchange XML, which would be our structured information. What does it stand for? It stands for Simple Access Object Protocol. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the data transfer. So how is the data transferred? Like JSON, it can be transferred over HTTP. But you can also receive data through FTP and SMTP. In our example, when we write our code, it will be transferred over HTTP. So to invoke these services, it uses something called RPC, Remote Procedure Call. Let's take a look. A client performs an RPC by sending an HTTP request to a server that receives the HTTP response. So you're sending a request and you're getting a response. A call can have multiple parameters in one result. For example, we have a calculator web service. We need to pass two parameters. Those parameters are going to be two numbers, two and two. Our response should be four, assuming that calculator service adds the numbers. So what's the difference between RPC and REST? In comparison to REST, where documents are transferred, RPC is designed to call methods. So for example, we have our calculator service. Our method would be calculator. One difference between a REST protocol and an XML RPC pro uh, protocol is that the REST protocol uses the HTTP URI for the parameter information. So as we discussed, RPC would take in the XML, the parameters would be in there. For REST, we pass our parameters strictly in the URI. For example, here, we have a POST request, and parameters would be passed here through the URI. Okay, so let's go over what an XML request and a response would look like. So here we have our initial request. It's going to make a POST request to the U using the URI. And that method, we're going to call it, it's going to be get state. The parameter we're going to pass is going to be a value of 40. Now let's take a look at what the response would be after we sent that XML. We should get an XML response with a value of South Dakota. So we got our state, the 40th state, South Dakota. So once we receive this, we're going to go in our code and we're going to parse this out so that way we just have this South Dakota that we can present to the end user. Okay, let's go over some pros and cons. Alright, to start, there's some pros. The advantage with this is that your requests and responses can be very well structured. And WSDL files provide most of the documentation for you. So the XML kind of provides that solid structure. And the WSDL files um, essentially are guaranteed when connecting to these SOAP XML web services. And they provide all of the functions, I mean methods, that you can call. Um, and SOAP is generally transport agnostic, meaning you don't necessarily need to use HTTP. As we discussed, you can use SMTP or FTP. All right, some cons. Uh, it is more resource intensive than REST and in, in uh, slower responses. It is also more complex to create calls in a, Java, a JavaScript environment compared to REST. All right, so why? Why would we learn SOAP XML web services? Well, they're still popular amongst quite a few companies. Um, and, and on the job, you may be required to create some automation between these applications or receive data from some of these uh, applications that rely on these SOAP XML web services rather than implementing a more modern uh, API like uh, JSON with RESTful. Um, it's also uh, it's good to be well versed in in all these different types of APIs. It just kind of gives you that uh, uh, step ahead of other people when you're interviewing and uh, trying to do your job. So in essence, um, 
we have SOAP XML Web Services is simple object access protocol and it just sends and receives XML data to these uh, methods and these methods will um, perform an action on that data and send us a response. That's essentially all it is and the, I guess the hardest part is um, sending and receiving that XML and parsing out the data. So let's go ahead and start installing our tools in the next video so we can build out this simple application.